Shen is a cool awesome dude who's always at the top of his Riz game and is also known as the first successful Hustler University student of Andrew Tate. He's also the strongest swordsman in the world, who belongs to the Kai Jian sect and is the third prince of the dynasty. Nine months before the start of the story, he has a fated encounter with the strongest swordsman of the time, Mino of the Devil Sect, at the abandoned Swords Manor, which is the sacred home of one of the strongest sword technique manuals, called the Wonking Sword Method. The young prince is just chilling and vibing in the cool air when he notices the presence of the evil swordsman. Mino jumps at him from behind and tries to strike through him but Shen blocks it easily and sends him back. He asks Mino why the top swordsman of the world was cosplaying as a poor YouTuber who was trying to clickbait his viewers with a rice hat thumbnail. Mino says that he felt kinda kinky and that he made it to the top by killing others and then rushes at him after charging his sword with dark energy. Shen looks at him and says that if that's the case then he will make sure to deal with him properly and counters his strike with one of his own. After that, they go Super Saiyan and exchange some high-speed sword strikes until Shen manages to cut Mino's hat in half. Having lost his precious hat, Mino tries to taunt Shen and asks him if he was trying to unlock the achievement for missing all of his strikes, but Shen fires back by saying that he will take his life in the next 100 strikes anyways so he was just trying to be nice by giving him more time to run his mouth. Mino says that he would be dead before he can even make half that many strikes and they both charge at each other once again. Mino tries to strike Shen down but Shen dodges all his attacks and pushes him back. Mino retaliates by unleashing an energy strike followed up by a palm strike infused with demonic destruction energy. Shen jumps away and manages to put some distance between them but the demonic energy does considerable damage to him. Mino starts laughing and says that this attack destroys one's meridians and that he won't be able to use Kai skills again. Shen coughs up some blood but says that he won't need his Kai to cut down a sore loser like him and prepares to strike him down. They exchange some strikes as Shen counts his 98th strike and in the blink of an eye, he finishes Mino off by cutting his head down with his 99th strike. However, damage from Mino's last attack starts piling up and it strips Shen of all his Kai skills and he falls down. And that's the legend of the strongest swordsman, the third Prince Shen, as being told by the townsfolk to each other. We see many people gathered outside a temple as they talk about Shen's upbringing and how he started training with the sword at the early age of 4 years old. At the age of 7 he learned the 10,000 Tibetan sword arts and Andrew Tate's 99 principles of alpha malehood. At the age of 11 he fought with Yu Taoist of the Shanking Palace and claimed the title of the Sonic the Hedgehog of the Swordsmanship World. At the age of 14, he defeated one of the top 10 swordsmen in the world, the sword crazed Zuo and made Chuck Norris compliment his skills. The kids outside the temple say that it must all be a legend as no human can achieve all that at such a young age. No one can confirm if it's the truth or not as they got their information based on rumors but people say that after his last fight, Shen buried his sword in a stone and went into hiding. Some say that he spends his time in the mountains cultivating his Riz techniques but no one knows for sure. Just then, an old guide opens up the door of the temple and reveals the abandoned sword manor behind it and invites everyone in for a tour. On the other hand, we see Shen Bing chilling on top of a mountain while drinking some tea and enjoying the cool wind under the starry sky. He notices the presence of a dumb assassin and says that this is the 27th time he has tried to assassinate him in the last 9 months, and if he kindly leaves, he would like to enjoy his tea in peace for once. The dumb assassin thinks that he's a hotshot and says that Shen must be bluffing as he can't use any of his sword techniques without Kai much less sense his presence and reveals himself by launching an upfront attack at him. But Shen blocks his attack by breaking his sword and then defeats him in one move by using a Kai attack which shocks the assassin as he vanishes into nothingness. Shen pours his tea out and rolls his ass out of the place on his wheelchair saying that his mood has been ruined. Some days later, we see Shen once again being chilling with some tea while sitting beside his buried sword. He says that even though he has buried his sword, his father and brother won't stop bugging him about when he will be able to duel them once again, and then starts talking to someone hiding in the bushes behind him and says that they should be hiding in such a scary place as they would be grounded if they got caught. It turns out the hiding figure is none other than Chu, who is one of the younger heiresses to the Lai Yang sect. She seems to be Shen's friend and says that she is there to ask for his help. She tries to bribe him with some pine nut cakes that she made herself and then talks to him about teaching her some super cool one-shot ultimate moves. She explains that the five moves he taught her before were all countered by a single move from her sister and she is now here at the abandoned sword manor to test her skills against her once again. Shen turns around and says that she stopped practicing after learning the basics and those five moves were just a scratch's worth of techniques that she needed to learn to become a true sword master. He then calls her a lazy ass and says that she has the talent but if she wants to make a name for herself, she will have to put in the work like Rock Lee and surprise her sister like Rock Lee surprised the whole anime community by taking off his weight. 
roommates. Just then, her elder sister, Zir arrives on the scene and starts laughing at her by asking if this cripple's young man was the master she learned her stupid attacks from. But deep down, she feels jealous as she knows who Shen is and she wanted to be close to him herself but her stupid little sister got his favor and now she's salty. She then uses her high speed movement and appears beside Shen and says that if he can't be hers then he doesn't need to be anyone else's before pushing him off the cliff. Chu uses the same technique and manages to save him and says that Shen is the strongest swordsman in the world, and that she is proud to be her student. She then uses a defensive barrier technique to defend against her sister's attacks. Shen turns around and looks at Chu's moves and says that she is certainly more talented but needs some refinement. Zier says that she will teach her who the real heir to the sect is and launches a strong blast that breaks through Chu's defenses. It seems like this is the end for her but Shen surprises everyone by standing up and blocking her attack. Everyone wonders how he is able to stand, much less walk around with his broken body. Shen walks past her and breaks a branch from the tree and releases his sword's hacky and brings Zir to her knees. He tells her that she will get her chance to fight Chu fair and square at the succession ceremony at the mystique rank according to the rules of the abandoned sword manor, and until then he forbids her from hurting her sister at all. Zir says okay while bowing down and then runs away before Shen turns her into a cripple's young lady. After that, he sits back down in his wheelchair and reveals that he has been trying to rearrange his vessels to revive his Kai but he still needs a lot of practice before he can fight again. He says that just using his sword's hacky tired him out but he will figure something out eventually. Putting that aside, he then refers to Chu and says that it is a custom in the Lai Yang sect that when the two sisters come of age, they fight each other in a duel to death. The winner is named the next leader of the sect while the loser gets a quick trip to the other world. He then says that he will help her improve her techniques and then her sister will have no choice but to admire her instead of being jealous all the time. And to make that a reality, he will train her personally. He then clarifies that he will only be coaching her for three months. The path to martial arts in the Kai Jian sect is divided into eight levels. Among them, the top three levels train in the abandoned sword manor which is under Shen's direct care. These three levels are the mystique rank which accounts for the new members that join the manor and are under ability level 6, the terrestrial rank, which accounts for senior disciples level 7 and above and are considered masters of their arts, and the heavenly rank which accounts for the legendary masters as well as the top 10 martial artists in the world. He then asks Chu about the current top rankers of the manor. She explains that a guy named Zhu is the rank 1 for the mystique rank and he is said to be just a step away from ascending to the next rank. The elder prince is the one who invited him and he comes from a family of martial artists. Shen recognizes his talents and then says that soon Chu will take his position as the strongest, making her wonder how that would be possible as she is just a level 5 disciple and increasing one level requires at least 5 years worth of training. On the other hand, we see the elder prince talk to his father about Zhu's growth. They say that he should be able to become a master in the next 10 years but no matter what, no one will be able to ever overcome the talent and skill of his younger brother, Shen. This makes the elder prince jealous as he is the rank 1 among level 7 masters, but compared to his younger brother's skills, he's as defenseless as Chinese cabbage. He goes to see his brother and ask about his recovery but Shen shoos him away while implying that he is the one who has been sending assassins after him and wants him dead. Later that day, Shen begins training Chu and they start off with a medicinal bath that purifies Chu. He says that it will help boost her XP gain rate and tells her to tolerate the pain by thinking about her elder sister and how she wants to defeat her. The next day, they begin physical training with some absurd weights, heavy sword swings and regular painful medicinal baths for the next three months. After some grueling repetition of this routine and a time skip later, it is finally time for Chu to test her skills against the strongest mystique rank martial artist, Ju. The elder prince comes to see Shen as he leaves the mountain with Chu and wonders how Chu will be able to fight against someone as strong as Ju and tells Shen to not lie about his student growing so strong in just three months just to impress others. But Shen says that he should come see the match for himself if he thinks that he is lying and then lets Chu carry him to the battle arena. Meanwhile, Ju waits for his opponent in the battle arena with a crowd of people supporting him. They all think that Ju would win easily and that Chu is being arrogant by challenging him. But then Chu arrives with Shen and everyone starts simping over him due to his alpha male wrist. This surprises Zhu as well but the elder prince backs him up and tells him that Shen is just a crippled man now and it is a big opportunity for him to defeat his lousy disciple and make a name for himself. This excites Zhu and he taunts Chu by saying that he will defeat her in three moves and if he can't it will be his loss. Chu asks if he is okay with it as dodging his dumb attacks won't be hard for her. Shen backs her up and says that if she doesn't defeat him in three strikes herself then he will consider it her defeat. 
With this, their battle begins and Chu immediately takes the lead by breaking Ju's sword in half alongside taking his hair clip off as well in two swift moves. Ju falls down in despair and starts speaking like a sore loser that he was just being careless and that she wouldn't be able to defeat him if he was serious and then proceeds to use his ultimate move. Chu looks at him and sighs before finishing him off with a graceful strike and hopes that she didn't hit him too hard. This victory proves that she has ascended to level 7 and has become a sword master and everyone in the arena starts flocking around her like simps. But Shen says that her attacks lacked concentration and that she still has a long way to go and then has her carry him back to his quarters in the palace instead of the mountain which everyone wonders if Shen has finally decided to return to the manor as well. But before leaving, Shen reassures his brother that he is not interested in things like fame and reputation that he is after so he shouldn't worry about him. Later that day, the news of Shen returning to the palace reaches his father's ears and he calls for the elder prince to accompany him to see his younger brother. The elder prince walks with his father and thinks back to the time when Shen came back home with all his injuries from the battle with Mino. They brought in the most famous doctor of the land but even he couldn't do anything about Shen's damaged meridians. But despite this, the sect leader only cared about Shen and this made the elder prince feel pathetic for himself. He loathed Shen for this and wished that he would die. That is when he encounters a fire demon who tells him that if he wishes to come out of his younger brother's shadow then he must kill him himself, and that's what led to the corruption of the Elder Prince. Coming back to the current day, the sect leader tells the Elder Prince that the decennial summit of the martial world will be held soon with many masters attending the event. He leaves the Elder Prince in charge of the matter and says that he feels bad for leaving him to take care of everything but now he is getting old and his younger brother can't do much either so he must take up the mantle. Later that night, the Elder Prince gives something to one of his men and sends him off to spread some news. After that, we see the same fire demon come to him and it turns out the Elder Prince is indeed cooking some evil scheme to get rid of Shen once and for all. A few days later, the decennial summit takes place and the legendary masters from all over the world gather at the abandoned sacred manor including Chu's granny, the master of the Laiyang sect, the old servant of the abandoned sword manor, Lu, and the famous doctor and martial artist, Fu. They all enjoy the get-together hosted by the elder prince but then they hear the voice of the last among the top 10 heavenly sword master, the leader of the devil sect, Zhu. He complains that his disciple Duan was hired to assassinate Shen but he never returned after coming to the manor so he's here to avenge his death. Everyone wonders if he was an utterly stupid person or was just acting like one but Zhu seems to be serious and it ruins everyone's mood. They wonder how Shen could have defeated the assassin when he can't even get out of his wheelchair. But just then Shen arrives on the spot and says that he did indeed put Zhu's disciple down. It turns out it was all part of the Elder Prince's scheme where he hired Duan to kill Shen, and then spread the news of his failure to Zhu so he would come seeking revenge from the crippled prince. As expected, Zhu jumps down and prepares to launch a lethal attack on Shen, but Shen knocks him back with his alpha male hacky and makes him cough up blood. This makes everyone surprised as they wonder what did Shen do but Shen decides to surprise them even more by saying that Zhu won't be enough if they want to take him down. While Zhu is busy sweating his pants, Shen looks around and says that if there's any other heavenly master whose disciple he has killed and they seek vengeance then they are welcome to join Zhu right now. One of the righteous monks and heavenly masters, Liu, steps forward and says that he is certainly inferior to the young prince but he wonders why his disciple Fuo had to die at the hands of the young prince. Shen accepts the allegations and asks if there is anyone else who wants to join. Liu's friend Dian joins in as well saying that he doesn't have any information leaking disciples like Ad and Ross, but he will help his friend if he is fighting. Shen welcomes him and says that they can all attack him at once but it won't be enough and invites other heavenly masters as well. Jai steps up seeking revenge for her disciple's death as well and Shen accepts it even though he doesn't remember ever fighting him. But he tells her that she is far weaker than others to be challenging him like that. This makes her mad and she says she will not tolerate such insults but Shen shuts her up by sending her to the deep ocean by crushing her under his supreme alpha male hacky. Liu helps her out of it and says that Shen has ascended to a level of martial arts that's in the realm of the gods. Seeing this, the manager of the manor, Liu joins the heavenly masters saying that he is responsible for the discipline of everyone at the manor. And as the young prince has committed murders without any good reason, he is obliged to carry his duty and whoop his ass with his iron fists. Shen welcomes the old man and tells the others to join in as well so he can maybe have a challenge. Chu's granny takes him up on the request for political gains and that's how he manages to make an enemy of all the other heavenly masters besides himself in one afternoon. He then tells all of them to show him their best attacks and lets them jump at him with their moves. It looks like Shen's cockiness would be the end of him but Shen knocks them all back by simply turning his back at them and calling it a special move. 
Having learned this special technique from Chuck Norris himself, he proves that throughout heavens and earth, he alone is the honored one and has no plans of getting ripped in half by some dumb cursed spirit. In that one attack, he kills Zhu and Zhang, turns Lu into Sir One Arm and defeats all the other heavenly masters as well. His fight makes Madara vs the five Kages look more serious but he rubs it further in by giving his judgment over them all. He says that Zhu was an evil man while Zhang was arrogant and was oppressing others with his powers so he killed them. Lu had contributed much to the manor so he spared his life but took his iron fists, and he will be expelled for raising his hand against him. As for the rest of them, he showed mercy as they are generally just and pious but he won't tolerate such a thing in future. He lowers Chu's granny's level by one and then also disables Jai's martial arts and tells her to behave from now on. After dealing with the nine heavenly losers, he addresses his elder brother and asks him if he will accept defeat now. He then says that he doesn't want to kill him as they are brothers so he should just go and do it himself. Hearing this, the elder prince laughs like a manic and releases the fire devil that had been lurking with him since that day. It turns out he was the legendary Five Swords demon. He appears every 60 years and defeats the strongest martial artist of the era. No one knows why he does that but it hasn't been 60 years yet so they don't know why he's there so early. The old demon looks at Shen and asks if he has acquired the godly sword technique to which Shen says yes. He then tells him to get to level 9 and then he will fight him. Shen looks at him and says that the demon's blood swapping technique has a fundamental flaw and he pities him for not being able to achieve the peak of martial arts because of it. This makes the demon angry and he shoots a fireball at Shen but he simply parries it away with his gaze. The demon says that parrying a small fireball from him right now means nothing and that he will come fight him at the manor on the next full moon in his true body, and will claim his soul. After this incident, the sect leader captures the elder prince and asks him about the five swords demon's whereabouts. He says that he doesn't know anything about that and even if he did, they wouldn't be able to do anything about it given how strong he is. On the other hand, Shen is being chilling at the manor with Chu while painting on a piece of paper. Chu asks him if he isn't worried about the upcoming battle and Shen says he'd rather die of boredom rather than worrying about an old demon. He then says that given his Kai, the demon should be close to reaching level 10 where one becomes able to split the eye of the moon and ascend to the next realm. Seeing his calm and cool nature, Chu asks Shen about his odds of victory and he says that if he fights the old man now, it would be a 50-50, which worries Chu even more. At the same time, all the other heavenly masters also worry about the upcoming demon and resolve to help Shen win the fight for the sake of the martial world. Meanwhile, Shen asks Chu to take him to the town to enjoy some street food and tells her to take him to an old man's food stall. It turns out the old man is actually the Five Swords demon who is casually serving people with some bus and food while waiting for the night of the full moon. Chu starts sweating her pants but Shen calms her down and says that they won't fight right now as it isn't the right time yet. He then has a drink with the old demon and tells him that he should have focused on his skills rather than learning an evil technique like the blood swapping technique and he might have been able to surpass him. The demon laughs and says that he would ascend to the next realm and tells Shen to stay out of his way before leaving. It turns out the blood swapping technique is an ancient move that allows its user to suck the blood and kai of powerful people and make their powers their own. Just like that, the night of the full moon arrives and the five swords demon walks over the lake in front of Shen and makes his presence known. He then launches an attack on Shen, prompting him to fly up with his kai. The demon then follows him in the sky and says that they both share the same origin and that's why he will show him respect by showing no mercy at all in their fight. After that, the demon rushes in with a strong aura-infused attack from his hands but Shen dodges it by instantly teleporting behind him. The demon compliments him and they both engage in a Dragon Ball Z-style high-speed brawl infused with kai energy. The heavenly masters marvel at the two fighters' insane killing intent and hacky while one of them wonders how Shen managed to recover his damaged vessels. Dr. Fu says that Shen didn't heal his vessels and that he was using his insane amount of Kai to support his legs. Shen zooms forward and pushes the demon back but the demon fights back by unleashing an energy slash at him. Shen parries it away with his fingers but this gives the demon enough time to use one of the stolen techniques, middle finger sword strike, that he acquired after killing one of the strongest swordsmen in history, Guan. The demon prepares the technique and sends a strong energy slash towards Shen but he simply sidesteps like Stephen Curry and dodges the whole thing. The demon tries to strike him from behind using a dimensional rift but Shen negates it with an energy slash of his own and says that his technique is just a poor imitation of the original. Seeing this, the demon picks up one of his swords and attacks Shen with a web of chaos splitting energy but Shen redirects the attack with his Kai and sends it back at him without any effort. He then grabs his sword himself and points it back at him. 
The demon picks up one of his other swords and shoots Shen with its special ability, but Shen simply uses the stolen sword to negate it and sends it back at the demon. This makes the demon really angry and he decides to attack Shen with the space splitting sword up front. Shen tries to block it with his hand but the sword cuts through his Kai layer and gives him a deep cut. Everyone starts worrying about Shen but he simply looks at the cut and says that if the original creators of these techniques hadn't been murdered by the demon, the martial artists of this world would have prospered a lot and says that he has certainly sinned against them. Hearing this, the demon starts laughing and says that only the person who splits the moon would be remembered in history, and the losers have no place in this world. He then unleashes the power of his strongest sword and creates a field of poisonous Kai. The Kai starts killing all life in the area but Shen stops it by taking off his shirt and uses it as a seal by infusing it with his Kai. He then tells the demon that he will have to go all out if he truly wishes to defeat him. The demon says that Shen is truly a supremely talented person who has made it to level 10 at the young age of 17 years old but he should curse his fate for crossing paths with him. He then summons all of his swords and starts eating them like a hungry peasant. He absorbs the power from the swords and transforms into his final boss form. He then attacks Shen with his blood arts but Shen dodges it swiftly and says that it's just a simple power up with disappointment. He says that without proper training, his aura and Kai won't perform optimally, and raises his fingers to command the legendary sword at the abandoned sword manor to come at his side. He then strikes the demon back with it and proceeds to unleash a strong slash that cuts right through it, putting him down once and for all. In his last moments, the demon thinks back on his life and how he wanted to become the strongest but at the end there was someone who was stronger than him. With his defeat, everyone takes a breath of relief but then they look up and notice a crack in the moon. Shen looks at it and commands it to break and just like that the eye of the moon breaks apart and pure and potent Kai flakes start pouring down from the sky. After absorbing the Kai from some time, everyone looks back up and notices the moon in the sky without any damage. They wonder if it was unbreakable but Shen flies down and says that their world will soon go through a lot of changes and that he's sure they all have questions for him but he will tell them the answers when the right time comes. The next day, everyone stands in the manor waiting for Shen to tell them about everything. It turns out all the oceans in the world have boiled out and borders have been erased because of that. Seeing everyone worried, Shen explains that the Moon Eye was actually a seal that was keeping their world isolated from the outer world like a bubble. With it broken, their world has ascended to the next realm. He then explains that this realm is much more potent in Kai and natural essence and that the people and beasts of this realm are at least ten times stronger than that of their world. This makes everyone worried about their position and if their new neighbors would accept them or turn them into their meals but Shen comforts them by saying that the people of this new world sees them as their juniors and should be willing to take them under as long as they obey their rules. He also advises the other masters to tell their disciples to not cause any trouble until they all grow strong enough to venture in the outer realm. Just then, two people from the new realm teleport inside the manor. Shen introduces himself and calls them the Eight World Cultivators. This piques their interest and the blue-haired guy says that Shen must have ancestry in their realm. Shen reveals that he is the descendant of Shen Meng Tian. The younger messenger, named Zhen, reveals that Shen Meng Tian was the young master of the Twelve Swords Pavilion but was banished from this realm for a crime. He then presents Shen with the choice to either join the pavilion or to start a new sect of his own. Shen says that his ancestor wished to separate himself from the pavilion by creating the manor so he will stick with it and create a sect of his own as well. Zhang acknowledges it and says that he will be granted the title of third baron and all the area around his manor will be considered his property. After that, they give him a scroll that contains all the information they might need about this realm alongside Shen's ancestors' history and take their leave. Once they are gone, Shen refers to all the sect leaders and tells them that they have a choice to either join his sect or to take their leave. The monk and his friend respectfully walk away while the doctor and Chu's granny agree to join him. After that, Shen says that he will develop new martial art techniques that are based on their respective arts as well as the Wonking Manual so they can train and become strong enough to fight the masters of this realm. He then says that they will go fight the Purple Flame sect to their west in three months to obtain some of their techniques and that he will make sure that they all become strong enough in the meantime. After that, he takes Chu with him and makes her practice by his side until a merchant from the New Realm shows up at the manor with some rainbow crystals. Shen's father acts as if he knows everything and says that the merchant's stuff looks good indeed but internally suffers from a panic attack wondering when Shen will come. Just then, Shen walks in on his wheelchair. He starts off by checking the spirit tempering pills and then asks about the price of the spirit blood crystals. The crystals are the dream of gacha players as there is no way of knowing which crystal contains spirit blood and which doesn't. For his order, the merchant proposes over 10,000 teals of gold which is roughly equal to 30 million dollars for my American friends. The rest of you can do the conversion yourself. Shen looks at the merchant and asks what if he just picks 100 spirit blood crystals and proceeds to shock him by picking all the ones with spirit blood in them. 
The merchant loses his mind and says that he will let him have all the spirit blood crystals and will be their personal supplier of the mineral if he shares the technique of finding which crystal has the blood. Shen says that he would be happy to do that but the merchant can't learn the technique as it's something unique to him. Hearing this, the merchant proposes a deal for him to help him identify the ores with a 30-70 split of profit but Shen counters the offer with a 50-50 split and then tells him to sell all the spirit tempering pills for free as well as the three nine voids pills that he has for half the price to show his sincerity. The merchant thinks about the deal and how he won't be making any profit on the pills but compared to what he will get in return it seems like a small price to pay. He agrees to the deal and tells Shen to only take one pill every three days. Later that day, Shen decides to do exactly the opposite by chugging the whole bottle like an addict. Chu starts panicking and prays that Shen lives through this but he says that they will know in three days before aging rapidly and turning into a crippled old man at death's doors. Chu rushes back inside the manor and brings Dr. Fu, Shen's father and the merchant to see what was happening with Shen. They check his condition and find out that he isn't T in any critical condition despite his appearance and ask if he said anything before swallowing the pills. Chu tells them that he told her to let him rest for three days and so they decide to do just that. In the next three days, Shen's body goes through various changes from turning into a giant to as small as an ant and turning super cold and hot at random times. Three days later, Shen wakes up and apologizes for worrying everyone and then tells Chu to follow him as they will be going to the Purple Flame sect. They travel to the sect's temple by horses and Shen says that they should get some flying rides from the merchant the next time he comes around. After arriving at the sect's temple, they ask for a meeting with the sect's master, but are greeted by the master's younger sister, who happens to be the vice master as well. They tell her that they want to learn their purple flame technique and are willing to exchange a special manual for it but the vice master becomes angry and says that she doesn't want their stupid manual, and that they should leave before she kicks them out forcefully for asking her to give up the manual to their secret arts. Shen tells her to at least hear him out but she doesn't listen and tells her men to attack them using the six flame formation. Shen being the giga chad that he is, welcomes them to attack him and then whoops their asses by calling their footwork and technique execution lazy. He then goes on to meet the vice master in the garden where she is busy having fun with the son of the Bayou sect's master. Shen whoops their asses as well when they act arrogant and then makes his way to the current sect master who is training at the top of a hill. He gives her some advice which helps her in her training and she turns around to greet him politely. Shen proposes the deal to her and says that he is willing to share the true words of the Violet Phoenix. Hearing this, the sect master becomes very intrigued and reveals that since the disappearance of the last sect master, the true words have been missing. She herself only knows three sentences and then asks him how many he knows. Shen says that he knows all 24 of them which surprises the sect master even more as only the first ancestor knew the full 24 sentences. Shen says that she can confirm for herself and then recites some lyrics from Taylor Swift's new song. Hearing them, the sect master immediately confirms that Shen is the real deal and reveals that as one improves their purple flame technique and levels up, their body starts feeling a burning pain inside. The only way to suppress that pain is by the recitation of the true words and Shen's recitation suppressed her pain just now. She then orders one of her servants to bring the flower of the divine violet flames and gives it to Shen as an apology. The flower is a divine treasure of the sect and it makes the vice master worried if it is the right move. She runs back to her lover and tells him about everything. The young master of the Bayou sect says that he will make sure to defeat Shen and walks back home to plan some evil schemes. After that, Shen and Chu return to the manor and Shen gives one of the petals of the flower to Chu's granny. The flower contains the entirety of the knowledge about the purple flame technique. She tells her to combine it with her native technique and then teach it to her disciples as well. He gives her another petal for when she finds a suitable disciple for it and gives the last petal to Chu and makes her train for the next three years under him so she can ascend to level 3 of the new realm rankings. After three years, old monk, Liu, visits Shen and asks for his help. He says that the Bayou sect of the new realm has asked them to join them and says that his temple will soon lose its legacy, as no one among the youngsters want to continue in his arts and seek change. Chu remembers that they beat the son of the Bayou sect's master at the Purple Flame sect temple three years ago, and tells Shen about it. Shen thinks about it and says that he will send a messenger to the Bayou sect and will tell them to stop bothering the sects under his manor or else he will destroy them personally. After that, he sends Chu to deliver the message on her own. When she arrives at the Bayou sect's temple, their elders become surprised to see that such a young girl is already at the level of their masters. They send the master's son to deal with her and find out if the manor found some ancient arts and if that was the secret behind their rapid growth. 
The son meets up with Chu and messes up the whole negotiations with his arrogant act prompting Chu to deliver the message in honesty as she warns them to stop messing with them or Master Shen would erase them from history. With this warning, the Bayu sect members surround her and the young master says that he will have some of their masters fight against Chu and if she wins, they will send her off and if she loses they will have her leave something behind. Chu thinks about Shen's orders and accepts the challenge and then defeats some of the level 3 masters of the sect by using the fighting style she learned from Shen. She then takes her leave and the Baiyu sect master asks his son more about his interaction with them three years ago. The son says that he remembers Shen knowing the full sentences of the true word and this surprises him. He scolds his dumb son for not telling him about such an important thing and then decides to send some spies in to investigate the manor and learn more about their secrets. After some days, the abandoned sword manor sees a huge number of people wanting to join them. It turns out Chu's showcase of her power inspired many people to learn from her master. Shen decides to welcome all of them and says that they would be treated as external disciples. The old master calls Chu to his side and tells her to find a maid for Shen from the newcomers as well. Outside the manor, we see one of the disciples welcoming them in and telling them about their roles as external disciples which makes them mad. Chu also scouts one of the girls to be Shen's maid who turns out to be a spy from the Baiyu sect. Meanwhile, a convoy from the dragon sect comes to visit the manor as well. The young dragon starts off rudely by dishonoring Shen's father and Chu's granny and is returned with an attack from Chu herself. But it doesn't even scratch him and he laughs revealing his golden scale armor. Just then, Shen arrives and says that if he is so confident in his armor, he should try tanking one of his attacks and test his strength. The arrogant dragon agrees saying that even his uncle, the dragon king would require several attacks to damage this armor, so there's no way this young kid can destroy it in one attack. With that, he lets Shen attack him and as expected, Shen destroys his armor and makes him sweat his pants. Just then the princess of the dragon sect walks in and asks Shen what was happening. She says that she came there in peace and was going to ask them for their help and asks why they are treating them like this by destroying one of their treasures. Chu tells her to ask her cousin and the new maid testifies that the young dragon was being arrogant and even violated Shen which makes the princess really mad. She tells him to go back and wait for his punishment and then apologizes to Shen for his rude behavior. She then tells Shen that the Dragon King sent her there to ask for their help and that they are even willing to strengthen their bond with marriage if he wants to. Shen says that he will consider it and then tells the maid to show her to her room. Later that day, the Dragon Princess walks up to Shen and tells him that she will use the Dragon Clan's secret skill that allows them to locate secret treasures and will let him know about its location. The skill can only be used once in a century and she will use it for him to show him the sincerity of the dragon clan. She then uses the skill and says that the treasure is called the fairy sword and it is located in the Philian state. The sword is said to contain the knowledge of a hundred sword styles and only a true master can wield it. Somehow, Shen seems to recognize what it is and says that it's overrated before remembering about something related to the state. He then lets the princess take him to the place. When they arrive, the princess shows him an ancient stone and says that this is the place. When they walk close to it, lightning strikes from the sky and a dragon guy appears from within it. This person happens to be the princess's uncle and she fills him in on all the details regarding their arrival. They let Shen feel the sword's aura himself but Shen seems more interested in the glowing stone. He says that he created it by accident long ago and laughs that his friend kept it even after all this time. The Uncle Dragon says that even he can't get close to that stone and the Dragon King himself stops after getting within a 10 feet radius of it. But Shen simply walks to it and breaks the seal on the stone without a care in the world. As the seal breaks, a golden dragon comes out of it and it looks like he is Shen's friend. Everyone else in the area kneels down from the immense pressure from the dragon spirit but once Shen says his goodbye to it, it returns to the stone and Shen walks back home with it. The stone is called the Cold Dew Stone and is said to be the activation agent for the Twelve Swords but Shen can carry it as if it's nothing. The princess decides to go back to her clan to report all of this to the Dragon King while Shen walks back to the manor and tells Chu that he brought this sword to forge a sword out of it for her. The next day, Shen asks the merchant for a bunch of rare items that he needs to forge the sword for Chu. The merchant says that he can get everything other than the blood of the Dragon Eagle. He then explains that the Dragon Eagles are very ferocious beings who live near the Changshan city in the northwest. The lord of the city is a level 4 martial artist named Ren who has traveled many places alongside his cavalry and has plundered a lot of people as well. Shen says that in that case, he will go hunt the dragon eagle himself and will deal with Ren as well. With that, his journey begins and he arrives at the city all alone. There, he gets ambushed by some bandits but a lady named Hong scares him away. She seems to be there to hunt an armored lion alongside her men and offers Shen help as he looks weak. It looks like they are relying on a con man who acts as a level 4 martial artist, 
but Shen sees through him at once and takes them up on their offer for their kindness. At night, they encounter the armored lion and as expected, the fraud bodyguard runs away before anyone can see him. Shen says that he will offer the armored lion to them as a gift and slays the beast in one hit before walking away and introducing himself as the Lord of the Abandoned Sword Manor. After that, he continues to travel to find some dragon eagles and eventually runs into a group of them. He knocks one down and respectfully draws some of its blood for his use before letting it fly away. Meanwhile, some bandits associated with the city watch him from a distance and prepare to ambush him. They surround him and ask for money but Shen kills their leader like the cannon fodder he is and walks away silently. The bandits walk back to the city and inform their leader, who happens to be the vice lord of the city as well who practices the heaven thunder technique. Later that day, the vice lord leads his men to attack Shen but Shen turns him into thin air and black dust by blocking his Kai exit paths and lets him explode from within by using his own technique. After that, he returns to the manor and starts forging Chu's sword while the lord of the city, Ren issues a challenge for him to avenge the death of his right-hand man. Everyone worries while Chu feels happy that Shen is prioritizing her sword. She asks Shen if he isn't worried about fighting Ren and his 100-man barrier. Shen looks at her and asks when did he say he will be the one fighting them and then tells her that as soon as her sword is complete, she will have to go and deal with them on her own. Hearing this, Chu starts cursing the stars for letting her be born but proceeds to train harder as she is a total simp for Shen the Rizzler. Meanwhile, Chu's elder sister takes some of her followers and leaves the abandoned sword manor as she believes Shen would be defeated in this battle. Once her sword is complete, Shen and Chu walk to the city to face Ren and his 100 barriers. Lords and leaders of various sects including the Bayou sect and the Dragon Clan come to watch the fight as well. Even Hong joins the crowd to see Shen smurf on them. Once the battle starts, Shen sends Chu to impress everyone by destroying the 100 barrier formation while wearing a blindfold. He then joins the battle once Ren joins in himself and it turns into a 5 versus 1, with Shen on one side and Ren and his four strongest barrier men on the other. Ren starts off by complimenting Shen to have come so far but then unleashes his killing aura with the help of the seal of the city. It turns out he uses the seal to control his aura and directs it towards his opponents in conjunction with the barriers which make for a strong offense and a strong defense. Shen looks at him and sighs in disappointment and says that he thought he could control his killing aura on his own but he's just relying on a toy. Ren says that it doesn't matter and if he steps inside his barrier formation, he will die instantly. Shen asks him if that's true and instantly zooms forward and pokes his head with his finger up close. Ren's men jump in to protect him and Shen falls back saying he's pathetic. Ren says that this won't happen again but Shen proves him wrong by unleashing his potent alpha male hacky and strikes fear in the heart of everyone watching including Ren and his barrier men. He then simply walks past them and pokes Ren's forehead once again and claims his victory. Ren falls on his knees and says that he will give his cavalry of 3,000 men to Shen and will become his servant as well. Shen accepts his apology and tells him to become one of the guardians of the manor and to clean his city of all bad people himself. On the other hand, we find out that the Bayou spy girl is actually the daughter of the sex leader and she has decided to join Shen instead by acting as a double spy. With her help, they find out that the Bayou sect is trying to lure a strong beast towards the abandoned Sword Manor and it will attack the manor on their 10th year anniversary since ascending to this realm. Soon the day of the anniversary comes by and a lot of people join the event hosted at the manor including the leader of the Bayou sect as well as the 8 world cultivator, Jang. Shen sends his father out to greet the guests but soon everyone feels the presence of a strong beast approaching them. Jiang and the other high-class people walk out and confirm that a devil beast was walking towards the manor. Jiang flies towards it and tries to fight it but gets his ass whooped and thrown back at the manor. This is when Shen meets him and thanks him for fighting to protect the manor. He then walks out and approaches the devil beast himself and instead of fighting the thing, he simply pets it like a bitch and tames it. He takes one of its horns and tells it to go back to the blessed spot and to continue cultivating its kai. Everyone is surprised at this act and wonder if they are dreaming but Shen comes back with the horn and says that everything is fine now. After that, he turns to the leader of the Bayou sect and reveals his plot with the help of his daughter and orders him to go to the other world himself. The leader requests that Shen show mercy and find a suitable heir to his sect. Shen promises to do so and then hands it over to his daughter. Once this matter is dealt with, he walks back to the manor and absorbs the Kai from the horn which makes his eyes bloody red. Chu worries for him but Shen tells her to let him train alone for a month as it is a necessary step for him to be able to split the moon of this world and to ascend to the heavenly realm. After one month of hobbiting up inside his lair like a League of Legends player with no life, Shen finally decides to touch some grass and walks out. 
The merchant tells him about some leaves that he can roll up and smoke to enhance his kai. Shen says that they are special leaves from the mystique tree of this world and are said to contain an endless amount of mystique kai that will help him slash the moon sooner. With that, they all head to the auction that's being held at the Ju Chong Heaven. On their way, Shen gets to meet his distant cousin, the young master Shen of the Twelve Swords Pavilion. The management gives Shen and his group a run-down dusty room but Shen shows them the seal of the Tenth Heaven Order and gets a VIP room. The seal turns out to be from a superior heaven which has the authority of destroying this lower heaven at any time if they disobey them. Meanwhile, a companion of the Shen of the Twelve Swords Pavilion named Shanguan thinks that Shen is arrogant and looks down upon their sect and decides to pick a fight with him by showing him his big finger. The next day, the auction starts and Shen decides to get back to Shanguan with Chu as his proxy. He makes him raise money over low-quality items and then backs off at the last bit making him pay absurd prices for them. In this way, they manage to make Shanguan spend more than 700,000 teals worth of gold, which is worth almost $2 billion for those wondering. After that, the time to bid on the special leaves comes and Shen surprises everyone by going full Bruce Wayne and opening his bid with 1 million teals of purple gold worth over 3.5 billion USD which is a lot more than the $4.35 in my bank account. It turns out there are no leaves in the auction house and that it is all a ploy by the staff to lure in rich people and run off with their money. Suddenly, the whole place is surrounded by a starry barrier and slash attacks start coming from nowhere. A level 5 martial artist dies from one of the slashes and it makes everyone worry for their life. However, Shen simply walks through a hidden door and takes his companions to the storage room and tells them to take all the medicines and expensive items. After that he breaks the barrier and fights the Taoists who cast it. He lets them attack him and then watches as they die on their own because of breaking the 500 years old promise which reflects any attack a member of their heaven unleashes at a member of the 10th heaven. Once he is done with them, the leader of the Taoist arrives and cleans up after his disciples. He seems to know about Shen and tells him to take his leave in peace as they will meet again in future for sure. After that, Shen rides back to the manor with his companions but the dragon princess gets a note telling her that the dragon king was attacked and that she needs to hurry back to the dragon family mansion. She asks for Shen's permission to return and then hurries back home. As she leaves, Chu asks Shen if everything is alright with her and he says that it could be that the dragon family was suffering from some crises and so they called her back home as she is their princess. Chu suggests that they go help them and Shen agrees by saying that it should be about that time. He further explains that the dragon clan faces a calamity every 500 years and it seems like they are going to face one soon. Back at the Dragon King's manor, his mom, Grandma Dragon has risen up to take command. The Dragon King became victim to an assassination attempt while he lost one of his brothers to the assassin. Even though he is out of critical condition, he is yet to gain consciousness. With the fear of the upcoming calamity, the dragons prepare for the dragon blood ritual but then they hear a ring that informs them about the arrival of the person with the ability to split water. Meanwhile, Shen makes his way to the entrance of the Dragon King's manor. He rings the bell which happens to be a piece of stone and a water person comes out. The gatekeeper acts rude and says that the mansion is in chaos right now and he can't let anyone in regardless of which country's hotshot they are. Shen becomes annoyed at him and simply throws him away with his kai. After that, he uses the water splitting technique and walks straight down to see the dragon king himself while worrying about a potential copyright strike from Moses. On the other hand, it is necessary for all the dragon clan members to greet the inheritor of the water splitting technique as per ancient tradition but only the second brother of the king goes out to greet Shen. They all worry about the current situation and their circumstance but this lack of respect offends Shen, and he asks for an explanation. The king's second brother, Zhao Jr., tells Shen about everything and offers a sincere apology and takes him inside to meet everyone else. On their way, he asks Shen if he would let him spar with him as he is a martial arts fan and Shen says that he can do it and tells him to attack him with his strongest ultimate move and if he managed to even touch his clothes or make him move one step away, he would accept his loss. Hearing this, Zhao's son rushes in and unleashes the dragon's ultimate move at level 5 at him. Shen simply uses his alpha male hacky and makes the attack turn around and hit the son instead. With this, he calls it a day for their battle and tells Zhao to go treat his son. Meanwhile, a messenger informs Grandma Dragon about this interaction and when she learns more about Shen from the princess she wonders if it's someone she knows from long ago and sends her man to bring Shen to her for a chat. Shen walks inside the ritual room and meets up with the old granny. It turns out she is the only one there who was alive 500 years ago and still remembers Shen before he was born in the lower realm. She feels extremely happy to see Shen once again and tells him that she has the secret leaves he was looking for in her treasury and that she would be happy to give them to him as a gift. 
Shen accepts and says that he will take care of the dragon calamity as he did 500 years ago. After this, he walks out and tells Chu that they would be staying there for a couple of days. Just like that, the time of the dragon ritual comes and the pure-blooded princess goes to the ritual room to pray for the stabilization of the dragon blood within her kin. While she is doing all that, her uncle, Zhao Jr. barges into the room and says that her father woke up from his coma and that he wants to see her before he dies and wants her to inherit the dragon clan as well. The princess says that she can't meet him at the moment but Zhao Jr. says that he will hold on for her so she better hurry and meet with her father. The princess feels grateful and thanks him but as soon as he gets the chance, Zhao Jr. corrupts the ritual and says that he is just following the commands of his master revealing that he has joined the Broken Heaven Taoist sect and has gained demonic powers in exchange for ridding himself of his dragon blood. The princess tries to fight back but he proves to be too strong and uses his power to open up a path to the Dragon King's manor from the outside for his Taoist friends who want to destroy it. The six Taoists that arrive at the manor turn out to be inspired by Frieza's Jinyu force as they make flashy poses and call out their dumb names. Shen walks out and tells Chu to deal with them and then backseats her during the entire fight until she defeats them all. It turns out she has now become stronger than an average level 5 New World ranker and her sword skills have grown significantly. With this taken care of, Shen walks inside the ritual room and uses his kai to first cancel the impure stream of rampaging dragon blood surrounding them. He then uses an ancient technique to compress all the blood back into their original vessels and completes the ritual on the princess's behalf. Once this calamity passes by, he decides to meet the old granny who offers him the special leaves. Seeing them, Shen remembers the good old times when he used to chill with Grandpa Dragon and gives a dragon orb to the granny that Grandpa Dragon cultivated before his death. Granny accepts it happily and then passes it on to the young princess as it is a treasure class item for dragons with the ability to resurrect them. After that, she goes on to meet Grandpa Dragon in the other realm as her family buries her at the bottom of the sea. After her burial, the Dragon King arrives and thanks Shen for everything he did for them. He offers him all the treasures under their possession and says that the Dragon Clan will forever be grateful to him. Shen says that he just did it for an old friend and decides to take his leave but then they suddenly hear the voice of some people from the Broken Heavens Taoism who call out to the Dragon King to the surface. It turns out the one calling the Dragon King is his old acquaintance, the renowned level 6 martial artist and swordsman, Guardian Jai. The Dragon King fears him and tries to not offend him but when he tells him to offer the Dragon Manor and his people to the Taoist sect, Shen steps in and says that the Dragon Clan is his ally and if they want to do anything with them they are free to find him at the manor. Jai looks at Shen and challenges him to a fight but Shen beats him in a simple move and vaporizes his sword into flowers. He then gives him a free lecture about swordsmanship, Kai, and spirit and makes him recognize himself as the superior martial artist. After dealing with all the problems for the Dragon Clan, Shen returns to abandoned Sword Manor with his disciples. He takes the Dragon Princess under him as well and is greeted by his father upon their return. His father tells him that his journey has spread the good name of the manor far and wide which has led to many sects sucking up to them. He then says that some people from the Twelve Swords Pavilion are also there to talk to him and introduces them. It turns out they are there to invite Shen to the pavilion but internally they don't want him to come back so they taunt him by challenging Chu. They make a bet that if they win, Shen would join his manor with the pavilion and Shen says that if Chu wins, they will crawl out of the manor like the pathetic insects that they are. As expected, Chu manages to defeat the elder in just two strikes and as per their bet, Shen makes them crawl their asses out of the manor. The messenger feels humiliated and decides to misinform his leader by saying that Shen was an arrogant runt who dishonored them and indirectly challenged her authority by making a show of them in front of people. The leader hears about all this and decides to take this story to one of the elders of the Twelve Swords Pavilion and makes him send a hero's order to Shen telling him to come to the pavilion and ask for an apology. The hero's order is a special document that lets the holder summon all the strong heroes in the world and make them fight their target. Shen hears about the news from his father and tells them to simply ignore it. Seeing this, the elder becomes even more mad and sends his group of seven assassins after Shen. However, Shen finds out about them immediately and walks out of the manor alongside Chu and the Dragon Princess, and calls them out for being lousy assassins who can't even keep their farts in and hide their presence properly. He then tells them to show him their ultimate move, the seven killings of the missing sword. Hearing the technique's name, the assassins become really surprised as it is a top secret even among the high rankers of the pavilion much less anyone outside of the pavilion. They acknowledge Shen's knowledge and say that they will oblige and attack him. Shen says that even that attack won't be enough to warrant his attention so he tells his disciples to take charge and deal with the assassins instead. He backseats them during the whole fight in the name of coaching and it all ends with them winning and the assassins biting their tongues and putting themselves down. 
The next day, Shen's dad walks in and reveals that the pavilion wants to cut all ties with the manor and they have requested him to come pick up all the items of his ancestor or else they will burn them all. Shen thinks about it and says that it's a good opportunity for him to pay Thim a visit and decides to go there alongside his disciples. Meanwhile, the leader at the pavilion plans an evil scheme to cast a mind control spell on Shen of the pavilion and prompts him to fight Shen for the right to the inheritance of their ancestor. She also infuses a Kai doubling technique in him that gives him a power boost and hopes that it is enough to defeat Shen once and for all. When Shen arrives at the pavilion he is greeted by his ancestral cousin who challenges him for the rites and tells him to meet him at the West Tower. Once there, Shen tells him that his sword technique isn't strong enough for him to fight him personally so he sends Chu to fight in his place instead. This infuriates his cousin who starts the fight off with some strong slashes but Chu holds her own against him proving just how far she has come since day one. The dragon princess seems worried about air but then she looks at Shen who pulls a Kakashi on her by taking out a book and reading it during such an intense fight. She asks him if he isn't worried about Chu at all but he says that he already knows that Chu would win in 600 moves and Shen will be cornered. With this, their battle continues and as predicted, Shen loses control over his Kai and transforms into a demonic form. But Chu continues to push him back and eventually wins the battle with her superior swordsmanship. After this, Shen and the others go to the pavilion storage room to pick up his ancestors' relics but there they cross paths with the elder who sent the assassins after Shen. He challenges Shen to a duel but Shen identifies his technique immediately and calls it inferior to his own. He then demonstrates it by showcasing three Kai slashing techniques from three different sword styles and says that he knows of a way that will allow him to improve his technique as well. The Elder gives in and accepts his offer after realizing just how much of an alpha male Shen was. Everything looks good but then the green-haired leader rushes into the storage room with a knife pointed at Shen as she says that she won't let him leave from there alive. And this brings the anime to an end. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe with notifications on so you never miss out on any more of my recaps. Until next time, take care.